Here are 30 things that I have learned from being level 1 to being nearly max level on Helldivers 2. So number 1, there is no meta. The only thing meta is yourself and how you are able to use the guns. Each gun is honestly very well balanced and each gun has their own purpose that works better than others. For instance, using the arc when it comes to hordes of little scavengers. Those are pretty clutch because you can take out three or four at a time. Number two, mechs are super clutch for being solo, especially when you're trying to exfil and you have, you know, really, really low on respawns or you need to buy some more time to increase reinforcement count. Number three, the personal shield is great for stalker and hunter hits. Reason being is because when stalker or hunters hit you, they pretty much stagger your player to where you can't really react enough and by the time you try to get back up and react, they already hit you for two or three times back to back to back and you can essentially be caught up and die. Number four, the machine gun rover is in my opinion the worst stratagem. Reason being is once you're out of ammo, you're out of ammo and it goes away. This is unlike the other you know, stratagem for the rover which is the laser because the laser pretty much doesn't ever have to reload, it just has to cool off. While the machine gun one, it's pretty much done. Play the bugs differently from robots. The bugs are more, I would say, passive considering a lot of it's all melee, unless you're talking about the bile spewer or the bile mortars. However, the bots are essentially a whole different breed. You have to essentially play differently as well as use different guns and strategies. Number six. The best mission to learn solo strategies would be the egg missions for the bugs. Reason being is having to run from nest to nest to nest really helps pick up your RNG, especially when it comes to dodging, bobbing, and weaving all sorts of bugs. Number seven, the defender is the best lightsaber for tight situations. So I know some guns or some primaries take a little bit longer to reload, while the defender you can just quickly swap to it and quickly wipe out any and every bug within one clip or the entire clip. Number eight, the best ship upgrade would be the eagle. Don't try to fall for the other ones. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're good, but the eagle, you can have more than one actual eagle called in. So instead of having just one 500 kg bomb, you can actually have two. Number nine, the best perk for solo is stamina. In my opinion, and stamina is more important than what a lot of us might think about it because essentially that's when you're trying to run from whether it be the bile titans or whether it be from convoys of bots stamina is one thing that keeps your player in the game when it comes to distance number 10 Helldive is the best experience, in my opinion, for Chaos. Helldive essentially has more spawns, has a lot more armor on enemies, and just is a lot more stressful overall. So if you're the type that really just wants to get in every game and just be at a pretty much all-time high for anxiety, Helldive is pretty much that experience for you. Number 11. Don't be afraid to play solo. Yes, this game is dominantly co-op and is a lot more fun co-op, but solo actually helps you improve more as a single person because you learn how to rely on yourself and not other people trying to revive you. Solo is actually an experience that I have learned the most on when it compares to doing co-op because you get obviously less respawns and becomes more of reliance on your own self as well as strategy and when to use stratagems. Number 12. The stun sentry is the best for holding back large numbers and defense missions, such as, let's just say, the citizens or whether it be the terminate control system mission. Those are pretty much pretty well done when it comes to trying to hold back large numbers of enemies, as well as if you're trying to extract and you're trying to hold back a few bug breaches or enemy dropships. 13. The more nests you destroy, the more convoys are actually in the spawns, which means more enemies will spawn and then more bug breaches or more rocket or more ships will actually drop enemies. So definitely if you really want to just do the objective and want a lot less enemies, then avoid doing all of the nests or robotic areas. Number 14. The more strategic experience is going to have to be with the robots. The robots are a lot more, I guess, not really difficult but a lot more tedious because whenever they have rockets they can fire at you as well as call in a bunch of them at any time and they could just literally drop right on top of you whether it be a tank or whether it be some more of those tanky boys unlike bugs which is more of a melee passive experience number 15 the best missions for samples will be the smaller maps and objectives by that i mean when it comes to the eradicate or the search and destroy having a smaller map leads to i guess you could say 
even though there will be less room on your map, which means less spawns when it comes to samples, you will have a higher concentration over in the long run because you have a shorter amount of time to be on the map. So you get to go in and out of those maps in a faster period than let's just say doing a 40 minute mission and trying to track the entire map for missions or having to track the entire map for samples. Number 16, in tight X fills, just throw a squad respawn towards the chopper whenever it does land. So instead of trying to throw it away from all of the enemies, if you try to throw it when to the chopper, that would give you a higher chance to actually exfil or have the team exfil. Number 17. You do not have to exfil to get mission credit. Beyond popular belief or contrary to popular belief, you do not actually have to do all the objectives and exfil to get credit. You only have to just you only have to complete the mission itself. Number 18. The most common samples are around the eradication missions, usually typically around where the ammo catch boxes are located or around the center of the map when it comes to behind a lot of those boxes that can be destroyed either with grenades, chargers, or just explosives. Number 19. Use your supply stratagems to destroy nests and buildings when you are out of grenades or your favorite stratagems. Yes, the supply stratagems don't do really any crazy effectiveness, but if you just want to crush anything or destroy anything, just throw a supply stratagem on it, or if you want to destroy a bile type, try to throw a supply stratagem on it because it can still do enough damage. Number 20. Bobbing and weaving definitely helps avoid enemies with your hitbox. Whether you're trying to run from rockets or run from gunfire or even run from a bunch of stalkers and hunters that are trying to hit you or even go around brood commanders. Being able to effectively bob and weave will make a difference in this, especially if you do not have a shield generator and you're trying to go inside, let's just say, the egg missions or in large concentrations of enemies. For 21, if you do not activate your hell bombs that you do call in and you have to activate, the enemies can destroy it without the damn thing actually going off. For 22, Stun grenades are best for buying time if you're under large enemies, such as, let's just say, the vile titan. 23. Jetpacks are great for trick shots or getting out of really tight situations where you have structures around you. Number 24. Smoke grenades are more effective against bots than bugs. The bots are the enemies that shoot at you, and if you're just trying to avoid some convoys if you've recently been spotted, throw a few of these smokes out and then dive in front of some bushes or just go immediately prone, and then you should be able to avoid some for a short period of time, especially if you're trying to stem back up. Number 25. Shooting out the stomachs of bile titans actually stops bile from spewing. 26. Ultra samples are the most common around the spore sewers if you're doing a bug mission. Number 27. Do not engage in any and all enemies that you see. Yes, it might be tempting, however, if you're still trying to do the objective or still trying to get out of a really tight situation, you don't have to shoot at any and all things because that will start any and all spawns. 28. Take advantage of the suit perks. Believe it or not, yes, cosmetically some of them look badass. However, the ones that you might not be a fan of cosmetically actually can be the most clutch. My opinion, such as the one that I use, which increases 20% more stem time and two more stems in your inventory. To me, this is also clutch if you combine it with the stamina, because you essentially have more stamina and more stems and longer stems. So it all just depends on your situation. Especially if you're trying to speedrun, then just use the stealth, or the one with the least amount of armor. Number 29. You can use impact grenades to destroy bot facilities, believe it or not. Then last but not least, not all the guns are sighted at zero. For instance, such as this gun you see here, this one you actually have to aim the to the top left of your scope. Meanwhile, other guns you actually have to be a little bit below. So it really just depends on the gun that you are using. So not all guns are created equal. I hope all 30 of these help. These are just things that I have noted in my gameplay from level one to pretty much max level 50. So I hope this helps. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one. And thank you all for watching.